Hey man, 2021 had quite a few really great games and surprises, but like every year, there are some things that we just didn't like. So, like every year, we also wanted to get productively negative for a second and talk about seven 2021 gaming trends that need to die off. Starting off at number seven, this probably won't surprise you, it's very much in current conversation. It's the idea of just poor remasters. It's companies re-releasing their games with new textures or in a new resolution or on a new platform, and the quality is just not up to par and not really worth the experience. As a lot of you guys probably know, Grand Theft Auto Trilogy, the definitive edition, released uh, with a lot of issues. That thing needed a ton more time in the oven. And generally, a lot of people, especially the more discerning gamer, has come away pretty disappointed. These still happen all the time. I still think about the Silent Hill HD collection thing that screwed up the fog, you know, the most important important thing in the Silent Hill games. Uh, this year in particular, it's so jarring and noticeable, specifically because we got something that we thought here at Game Ranks was a pretty decent re-release or remaster, uh, the Mass Effect Legendary Collection, and then to have something so jarringly not as good, and then to go from there to the Grand Theft Auto Collection, which just seems like it didn't get the care that that series really deserves, was so disappointing. You've heard it all by now, it's been talked to death, Rockstar is slowly starting to update it and hopefully get it to where it deserves to be. But for now, uh, yeah, we just like this trend to go away. I know a lot of people are sick of remasters and remakes, but it's just, it is what it is. They're gonna keep coming. At the very least, we just ask that the work is put into them and they're worth revisiting. Next over at number six, another trend that we'd like to die uh, that's been pretty popular for the last year or so, it's those high GPU prices. Yes, uh, many of you out there have been looking for a new shiny graphics card from AMD or Nvidia and have found yourself coming up short, not just because of all the shortages and everything with worldwide supply chain issues, but just the fact that it makes prices for these things almost unreachable. According to reports from WCCF Tech, AMD Radeon and Nvidia GeForce graphics cards are still twice as expensive as their suggested retail price, and GPU prices, according to them, aren't going to get better anytime soon. This is all because of chip shortages, and apparently this is going to roll over into 2022. So while we want this trend to die off, it seems like it might not anytime soon. And that's unfortunate because reports suggest that like Nvidia cards are 88% over their MSRP, which is insane. There's been so many things going on in the past few years with GPUs, uh, with people gobbling them up uh, for cryptocurrency mining to the shortages. It's been rough. They are out there, they are available, but they're just so steep. And for a lot of people, it's really hard to justify unless you've got that expendable income. Next, over at number five, let's talk about digital games and digital storefronts. Uh, there's been a trend where games are often removed or delisted from store platforms for various reasons, from licensing problems, maybe a digital game had a license in it for a licensed soundtrack type of thing that expired and therefore needed to legally be taken down. Uh, and then you have other things like Rockstar removing the old version of the games from their stores and replacing it with the newer remastered version. Digital Ownership is a hell of a thing. It's a slippery slope. We've talked about it in a lot of videos, but it's been a shame to see this happen and some games disappear uh, from the wayside. This has happened over the years, but this year, most recently, of course, it was with Rockstar and Konami delisted some Metal Gear Solid games from digital storefronts because they had to renew some licenses. Video game preservation and history really is something that's important and we talk about it a lot. And unfortunately, with a lot of digital stuff, at least for mainstream consumers who aren't doing hacks or downloads or anything like that, the availability of these things are completely in their control still, and it's unfortunate. This year, that has become very much apparent. Down to number four, another trend you could say is server issues. Now, a lot of online games have server issues when they first launch, and we can be pretty forgiving. You know, we get it. But really, the problem is server issues taking way too long to fix. Say, case in point this year, uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected, uh, the remake remaster version of the classic Diablo 2, had some server issues that went on for 
far too long, especially for a re-release of an older game. When you pay up that money and that game is primarily something that you use with the internet, you would hope that their servers are sound and ready to go. Or maybe, you know, at least within the first 24 hours. But anything after that, it starts to get a little bit rocky and more and more disappointing. Granted, for some of us out here, I know me personally, uh, I just like playing single player games, so this doesn't bother me too much. I am more of a casual multiplayer enjoyer, but for people where those types of games are their bread and butter, those server downtimes can be brutal. Now down to number three, let's acknowledge scalpers. Now at the end of last year, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X released to much fanfare and extremely limited availability. We already talked about chip shortages in the previous points, but that led to a lot of limited availability and with limited availability, unfortunately comes scalpers. And we've seen tons of them, uh, people buying up PS5s and Xbox Series Xs before people could get their hands on them. And then they go and try and resell them for higher prices. Man, you can argue that it is supply and demand and availability and stuff like that, but you can also argue that it's just straight up Grinch territory. Like, aren't we all in this together? Personally, I have a PlayStation 5, and if you're out there listening, I would like you to have a PlayStation 5. No, I can't give you one, but the last thing I'm gonna do is try and buy up another one and sell it for more. But everybody's different. It's a cruel world out there, and people are trying to survive. But damn it, man, the scalpers just kill the fun. There are talks, at least in the United States, of a consumer protection bill being introduced to get rid of scalper bots or automated bot software uh, that is used by scalpers to help them snatch up the products as soon as they go on sale. Uh, will that actually come to fruition? We don't know for sure. It's just a trend with this whole scalping thing. We would just love to go away in general. Down to number two, a trend that we'd like to see go away. Can can we stop going after modders? Can we just leave modders alone? Specifically this year, it, it's worth pointing out that uh, Grand Theft Auto and Rockstar's their parent company, Take Two, have once again issued takedown notices to Grand Theft Auto modders, specifically for GTA map mods most recently. This isn't somebody trying to sell cheats or hacks in Grand Theft Auto online. No, it's just old community members engaging in modding and reworking and messing around with the classic Grand Theft Auto games. Many have argued that it is a slippery slope, while Take-Two argues that it's copyright infringement, it's actually seemingly going to be an ongoing thing. Take-Two pursues it quite a bit. Nintendo in the past has also reportedly pursued this type of stuff, uh, but with the GTA stuff in particular, uh, modders are actually fighting back this time around. As recently as November, a group of GTA modders that were cracked down on uh, have responded and pushed back against the allegations and lawsuits with lawyers arguing it constitutes fair use. So again, right now we're talking this year specifically, it's been Take-Two Interactive, uh, but this isn't just a 2021 trend, it's been a thing for a minute, and we would love for there to be a way more peaceful resolution to this. Now down to number one, a gaming trend we would love to see go away. Uh, something that has happened for quite a few years and definitely this year. Uh, it, it's, it's games that are releasing too early. Games that are releasing and they're asking for your money, but they just feel unfinished. Obviously last year, the big thing, the big conversation was Cyberpunk 2077. But for us here in particular at Game Ranks, what stung for us the most this year was Battlefield 2042. Not only does it just not feel quite like a Battlefield game, it just feels incomplete and rushed and buggy and messy. EA explained that they were getting rid of the single player campaign and focusing just on building an incredible multiplayer experience. And still after all that, what we got is just an undercooked game that just doesn't really feel quite near a final product. It still feels like a beta with lots of graphical issues, weird rubber banding issues, netcode issues, the availability of content, and just a lack of things that Battlefield fans really come to expect, like down to a scoreboard. As of the time of making this video, we don't quite know Battlefield sales numbers yet. We're really hoping that EA and DICE learned their lesson this time. We've seen a lot of Battlefield games release in the past that needed a little work at launch, but this one really takes the cake, and we think that a lot of players are finally kind of fed up with it. We certainly were in our Before You Buy video, but everybody has a different game that they played that they think felt unfinished. You might argue the Grand Theft Auto Collection or insert any other game from this year. Whatever game it is, it might not be Battlefield or it might be something else 
else. Whatever the case, we just hope that games start releasing in better states because that's a very worrisome trend, you know? But hey, those are seven gaming trends from 2021 and really beyond uh, that we think need to die off. They need to become extinct, go the way of the dodo. You know what I mean? This of course is a venting session. So let us know in the comments what trends you would like to see go away. What stuff in gaming are you just not jiving with this year? In the past, we've talked about microtransactions. We've talked about all that stuff. We tried to hit on some different points this year, but we'd love to hear yours in the comments. If you enjoyed this video though, clicking the like button is the best thing you can do. It really very much helps us out. But as always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.